Hello, everyone. Um, in this video, I'm going to start going over some of the mock exams that are available um, that you'll have in Google Classroom and on the landing page for SMART. And uh, we're just going to get right into it. These videos uh, will probably be a bit long, but I'm going to put the I'm going to make one video for each question. So, in 2020, the AP exam is going to have two questions, two first response questions. The first one is 25 minutes long. Um, you, you do your work, and then when 25 minutes are up, you're gonna have five minutes to upload, um, and then that's it. And then you have access to the second question for 15 minutes, um, so that's the length of a more traditional free response question in the AP exam. And when those 15 minutes are up, you're gonna have five more minutes to upload your responses, and then that's it, you're done. So um, we're gonna get started, this is a, Problem problem one, which is supposed to be done in 25 minutes. Um, so we have the following information. We have, we have that graph of f prime. And uh, let's see what the, the, the stem of the question says. Um, we have uh, let g be the function defined by g of x. Uh, and it's a piecewise function, f of x squared minus 5. Um, when x is less or equal than three, something to note there, that's, that's a composition of functions. So we have f as the outer, x squared minus five as the inner. That might be important if we have to integrate, do substitution, if we have to do a derivative, that'll be a chain rule there. And then the second branch or the second piece of that piecewise function is five minus two x, that's for when x is greater than three. Now function f um, is twice differentiable on the close interval from negative two to 10. Twice differentiable means that that, that that graph is continuous, that function is continuous, which is also going to be important. Um, and on the closed interval from negative 2 to 10, it satisfies f of 6 equals negative 4, so we know a point on the graph of f. Now, what we are given up there is the graph of f prime, which is the derivative of f. And that graph of f prime has horizontal tangent lines at x equals 2, 5, 8, and 9. And then we have the areas of the regions that are between the graph of f prime and the x-axis are all labeled in the figure. Okay, so let's let's start with part A. Part A is about continuity. Part A show that g is continuous at x equals three. So remember that continuity requires three things to happen. The limit from the left needs to be equal to the limit from the right, and they both need to be equal to the point. If all those three happen, then we know that the function is continuous. So let's get started. Um, the limit as x approaches three from the left of g of x means that in the piecewise function, we're going to that first piece. So direct substitution is what we should always try first. We're gonna do f of, now we have three, squared minus five, um, and that's gonna be f of, uh, and then we have nine minus five, which is four, f of four. Now, here is something super key. Because we are given f of six, and we wanna find f of four, and we have the graph of f prime, we can set up an integral to find the value of f of four. So this is how this is gonna go. Um, we can set up an integral that says the integral from four to six of f prime of x dx. So that would be the area under the graph of f prime, which we have between four and six. Well, that's gonna be the antiderivative of f prime is f. So f of the upper limit, which we have, minus f of the lower limit, which is what we wanna find. And this is all to find the, the the limit from the left. So the graph of f prime between four and six, so I'm gonna shade that right here, has an area of three, but it's under the x-axis. So if I'm going from left to right, from four to six, then that area is actually a negative three. So this integral equals negative three, that's from the graph. Now f of six equals negative four, and then minus f of four, like that. So then we can go ahead and solve for f of four. 
I'm going to move that to the left side. F of 4 is going to be equal to negative 4 plus 3, which equals negative 1. So the limit as a, x approaches 3 from the left of g of x is negative 1. Now we also need the limit from the right. That's going to be a lot more straightforward. This one was a difficult one, really. So the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of g of x. Well, now we're going to go to the second um, branch of the piecewise function. And that's going to be 5 minus 2 times um, x, which is 3. So 5 minus 6 equals negative 1. So the limit, the two-sided limit exists because both the left and the right-hand limits are the same. Um, and then we would also have to check g of 3. So g of 3 would be exactly the same work uh, as we did uh, to find the first limit from the left. So this is negative 1. So all three things are equal. So then the conclusion which we must write in a first response is g is continuous at x equals 3. And then the reason is because the limit as x approaches 3, so I'm not writing plus or minus, so that means I already looked at both and I have the work to prove it, of the function g of x equals g of 3. And I have all of the math work, all the calculus work, all the math work that I needed to do to prove that. Okay, moving on to part b. Okay, part b. So same stem, I'm putting this on every single part because in many of them is going to be needed, of course. Uh, part B says find the absolute minimum, sorry, I did it again. Find the absolute maximum value of F on the interval from negative 2 to 10 and justify the answer. Okay, now since we are looking for the absolute maximum, then the candidates are going to come from this. Um, since we're looking for max, then any time, and this is uh, for function f, any time the derivative of f changes from positive to negative, right, that, that's a relative maximum, which in turn could be a absolute maximum. It's one of the candidates, but also the endpoints. So the candidates are going to be, uh, let's say, for absolute max. Um, where f prime changes from positive to negative, and also the endpoints. Okay, so if f prime, which is given by that graph, is changing from negative to positive, we're not even going to consider that. Okay, so let's see what our candidates are. We have x equals negative 2 because that's an endpoint. We have x equals, um, let's see. So this is negative, this is positive f prime, negative, positive, positive. Okay. So I only see one place or one x value where the graph of f prime changed from positive to negative. That would be at x equals 4. So that's the only candidate, candidate that's within the two endpoints. So x equals 4 is another candidate, and of course the endpoint x equals 10. Okay, now, um, now that we have these candidates, the way we're going to find, um, the way we're going to find the values of f at those points is the same as we did that first limit in part a, because we were given that f of 6 equals negative 4. And we have all the areas. So that's going to allow us to find um, the different values. OK, so we're going to do these, uh, find these values using the fundamental theorem of calculus. OK, so the first integral is going to involve negative 2 and negative 4. Uh, sorry, negative 2 and 6. So then, um, let's see here. Yeah, the integral from negative 2 to 6 of f prime of x dx, well, that's going to give me f of 6 minus f of negative 2. 
So then we need to go and look at that first area. Okay, so that first area is gonna be from negative two to positive six. So we're talking about this and then this and then that area, all of that. So um, since I'm going from left to right, anything under the x-axis will be negative, above the x-axis will be positive. So I have a first area of negative five and then plus an area, what is that? Now I can't see it, of 11 uh, minus three. That is the area from negative two to six. And that equals f of six, which we know, which is negative four, minus f of negative two, which we want to know. So then if we solve for f of negative two, f of negative two is going to be negative four. Um, and then what we have on the other side, let's see, it's 11 minus eight, which is positive three. So then subtract three from both sides, minus three. So f of negative two equals negative seven. I'm gonna start making a list over here on the right side. So this is x, this is f of x. Our first candidate was negative two and we got a value of negative seven. Okay, now we need to do the same thing with integrals for x equals four and x equals 10. So since the one we know is six, we're gonna go integral from four to six of f prime of x dx. And that's gonna be, okay, antiderivative of f prime is f, f of the upper limit minus f of the lower limit. Okay, now we want to find the area from four to six. So let's go look at the graph. From four to six, the area is just negative three because it's under the x-axis. So that one's, that one's pretty easy. Um, we have an area of negative three, then f of six we know it's negative four, and then minus f of four. And we wanna find f of four, so f of four, f of four, <laughs> it's gonna be negative four plus three, which equals negative one. Okay, so on our list over here, when x equals four, um, f of four is negative one. Okay, that's what we have so far. Okay, we have one more to find, and that would be to find um, f of 10. So that means that we need to go from six, which is the one that we know, to 10. The integral from six to 10 of f prime of x dx is f of 10 minus f of six. So then let's see, the area from six to 10 is, uh, I'm gonna shade it a little bit so you can see it, it's this area and then this area. So it's all positive, we're going from left to right, the areas above the x-axis, and we have seven plus four, which equals uh, 11. So this area is 11, f of 10 we don't know yet, and f of six is negative four, like that. So then f of 10 is going to be 11, and then this is four, which we're gonna subtract from both sides, so minus four equals seven. So then when x equals 10, um, f of 10 equals seven. And we're looking for the absolute maximum, so this would be the absolute maximum. Now, how are we gonna write that? Um, we could say something like the absolute maximum of f is f of 10 equals seven, right? Or we could say the absolute maximum of f is seven and it occurs at x equals 10. But if we write it this way, we're saying that the value, the y value is seven, that's the maximum, and we're saying where it happens because we're saying f of 10. Okay, so that was absolute max. Let's go on to part um, C. Okay, so same step once again. And you know what? Cafecito. So part C says for x is not equal to three, the function k, 
another function, is defined by that monster. And that monster has a function defined by an integral on the numerator and then an exponential on the bottom. Wow. It is known that that limit of that function k, when x approaches 3, can be evaluated using L'Hopital's rule. We want to find f of 3, and then we also want to evaluate the limits. So they are already telling me that that limit can be evaluated by L'Hopital's. What does that mean? That if I went ahead and plugged in 3, right, because I'm finding the limit as x approaches 3, I would get 0 on the numerator and 0 on the denominator. So what I want to do is I want to kind of like verify that because if it's presented like this, it means that by setting the numerator equal to zero after plugging in the, the x value that the limit is approaching, um, I'm going to be able to find something that I don't have yet. Okay. So of course, I'm going to have to do the derivative of the numerator and the denominator because that's L'Hopital's rule, but I'm sure I'm going to have to find something else before. Okay. So this is like verifying that L'Hopital's rule actually needs to happen. So I think I'm going to do that, um, let's see, over here on the right side. So um, I'm going to kind of say like what I'm doing here is like verifying L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's check. So the numerator. The limit as x approaches 3 um, of the numerator would be 3 times the integral from 4 to 3x of f prime of t dt minus 4x. So what would I do? I would plug in 3, um, no direct substitution, to every x that I see. So this is going to be 3 times the integral from 4 to 9, because 3 times 3 is 9, f prime of t dt minus 4 times 3. Okay. Now, um, we are using, because now we have x and t and we have a function defined by an integral, um, but that f is still the, or that f prime actually is still the graph that we're given. So that integral from 4 to 9 is the area between 4 and 9 of um, under the graph of f prime, which is what we are given. So if we look at our graph from 4, and this is 9 right here, we have negative 3 and positive 7. Okay, so we have 3 times negative 3 plus 7 minus um, 4 times 3, which is 12. Now, as you can see, we're going to have 3 times negative 4, sorry, 3 times 4, we minus 12, which in fact equals 0. Now, by setting that numerator equal to 0, after plugging in the 3, we just verify that that's in fact true. Let's see what happens if we do the denominator. So we have the limit as x approaches 3, and then that is going to be 3e e to the 2f of x plus 5 minus x. Okay. So, um, direct substitu substitution, 3e to the 2. Now, f of x is f of 3 plus 5 minus 3. Okay. Now, here's the thing. We have found values of f by doing integrals, right, and finding areas. But f of 3, well, it would be the area of like somewhere here. And we don't have an exact area there. However, since we know that when we did direct substitution, we were able to use L'Hopital's rule, that means that this equals 0. So then the only thing that we don't know here is f of 3. And that's actually one thing that they're asking me to find. They're asking me to find f of 3. Okay, so I have pretty much everything I need. Now, that's an exponential equation that I need to solve for f of 3. So let's go ahead and find it. Um, I could divide both sides by 3. So then I have e to the 2f of 3 plus 5. 
um, minus one equals zero. Okay, so I'm dividing both sides by three. And then I need to get that exponential by itself. So e to the two f of three plus five equals one. And now I can do natural logarithm on both sides. So that'll go away. And then we will have two f of three. That's very bad. F of three plus five and ln of one equals zero. So if I'm solving for f of three, I'm really two steps away, no? So move the five over, it's gonna be a negative and then divide by two. F of three equals negative five halves. And that's the answer to just the first thing, which is finding f of three. Now we wanna find the limit. So now this is where we're gonna do L'Hopital's rule. So um, the limit as x approaches three of k of x is, now I have to do the derivative of the numerator, derivative of the denominator, that's L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so now on the numerator, we have the derivative of an integral. So that is the second fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, so we have that three, that's just gonna sit there, three. Now the derivative of that integral is going to be f prime and plugging that 3x into where the t is. But then because that upper limit is not just an x by itself, we need to multiply by the derivative of 3x because that's a chain rule. Okay, so that's the derivative of that integral. Mine is the derivative of 4x, which is just 4. And then that's going to all be over. Um, let's see. Um, the derivative of that exponential. So the three just stays there. Now this is an e to the u. So same thing, e to the two times f of x minus five times chain rule derivative of the power, which is two f prime of x. Okay, that's just the derivative of, the, of this first term here. Minus the derivative of x, which is just one. Oof, okay, now let's start plugging in. So we have three f prime of, now if I plug in three, I'm gonna have three times three, which is nine, times another three minus four. Could have moved that three and make it a nine in the front, but I didn't. And then we have three e to the two f of three, which I believe we just found before, minus five up here, times two, f prime of three minus one. Okay, so f prime of nine, well, f prime is the graph that we have. So look, f prime of nine, the y value on the graph of f prime is zero. That's great. That is really, really great. So this is nine and f prime of nine is zero. That nine came from three times three. So nine times zero, that's gonna go away, minus four. And then in the denominator, f of three is negative five halves. So three e to the two times negative five halves minus five times two. And what's f prime of three? We need to look at the graph for that. f prime of three, ooh, look at that. They gave it to me, it's 3.5. So 3.5 and then minus one. So that went away and we have negative four over. Now look at the power there. These twos are gonna cancel out. So we have negative five. Um, hmm. Oh, it's plus five, look at that. Plus five here, plus five here. That changes things dramatically. So negative five plus five is zero. So the power of that E is zero, so that's just a one. So then all of this becomes a one. So we have a three there. And then we have times, two times 3.5 is seven. And then minus one. So we have negative four over, and then that's gonna be um, 21 minus one, which is 20. 
And then, you know, at this point, we could leave it here, actually, in a free response, or even here, because this is numeric, okay? So that would be good. Uh, but if we want to go all the way, then this would simplify to negative one fifth. Okay, this is a very interesting problem. Okay, um, moving on to the next uh, part. So, um, okay. Uh, next part. Okay, we're at 25 minutes here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop right now and I'm gonna make a like part one and then part two or part A and part B um, for this video. And that way the videos will be between 25 and, 20 and 30 minutes long. Okay, so I'll see you in a little bit uh, to go over parts D, E and F. Um, bye.